short. Um, you know, credit to, to an outstanding Maryland team. Um, capitalized on every mistake we made. Uh, a heck of a team, uh, very well coached, uh, but very, very proud. Obviously, these two men sitting next to me, our senior class uh, group that, that brought us back to this weekend, uh, very proud for our program. So um, obviously, it didn't work out the way we wanted, but very happy to be here. Okay, we'll take questions for the student athletes first. Uh, we have two microphone holders. Uh, please raise your hand if you have a question. Identify who you are when you get the microphone. And for uh, people on uh, Zoom, if you have a question, please raise your virtual hand, and we'll try to call on you as well. So anybody here yeah, has a front row? Okay, it's Kyle Frank with the Trentonian. George, um, so much of the momentum you guys have created in 2020 could have been stunted by the pandemic. So many guys took the year off and then came back. Um, do you feel like you have put Princeton lacrosse sort of back on that national stage now? Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to think so. I'm just so proud of these guys. We, you know, fought through all the adversity of the pandemic, and it's just a credit to our staff, um, all of our upperclassmen, everyone, just staying together, finding a way to get it done. And then when we came back in September, we just committed to it, uh, believing in each other. We were unranked. Uh, we come out, finish to the final four. Uh, you know, I'd say it's success. I'll take one. Here in the corner. I'll go. Over. For, for either of you guys, just with the, the way the first quarter unfolded, and you guys have dealt with them before. Uh, what was different this time, kind of them pouncing quick, and just how did you feel like you guys were able to recover and, and kind of stay in it there for, for quite a while longer? Uh, I can take us on. Um, I mean, I think, like you mentioned, we've kind of been there before. We've been through a lot of mm -hmm. up and downs, kind of been all over the place this season and stuff. So we have, we have all the trust in the world in each other and just the nice play. Um, and I think that kind of mentality lets us get back in the game. And, Thank you, Don. Thank you. Uh, Phil, all over the town topics for both players. Just talk about this right on one more what things that stand out when you look back on the spring. You know, I think one of the biggest things for us was those two um, games we lost to Harvard and Cornell. We came back. Um, we called it upgrade season. The coach did a great job getting us prepared. And so coming back and just playing with the newfound intensity, physicality, uh, just you know, trusting that even though we lost those two games, you're going to come back and make a run. So that's something I look back on and uh, just something really special. Yeah, um, I think that there's a lot of little moments um, between like little things that our strength coach did the day before, like to get us fired up, or like an injured guy putting up like posters in every person's locker like before our first game, like things like that. I'll, I'll look back to. I never forget um, just the, the support staff, the, the guys from like the last time of that chart to the first one were so bought in, and, and it was incredible. <coughs> There in second row, yeah, please. Uh, did the delay of the game do anything for your preparation, take anything away, or add any anxiety to what happened today? Uh, no, I mean, I think, uh, again, it, it was just kind of another roll with the punches kind of thing. Um, so you are going through like a pandemic, you kind of expect anything can happen. And that's <coughs> something I think kind of toughened our crew up and made us more ready to face any adversity, big or small. <coughs> Do we have any other questions for student athletes? Okay. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us today. Congratulations on a great season. And now we'll take up questions for Coach Fallon. Hey, Matt, Patrick Stevens with Lags Um the, When they got the three minute non release, so you get the one quick goal, weren't able to get anything more. Was that, you think, kind of a, a pivotal moment for you guys where they just weren't able to tack on it? I think obviously very fortunate uh, they ended up calling that three minute and locking mm -hmm. it in kind of gave us an opportunity to claw back in and field was kind of tilted at that point mm -hmm. uh, towards the Terps away so we were able to punch one in get a little momentum a little slow out of the start and then we ended up taking it into the third quarter to, to avoid the face off battle start with possession see if we could get something going um, defense did a great job changed the shut off um, floating shot so very well coached team back Hi, Coach. Uh, Tony Wheeler from Inside Maryland Sports. Um, you guys were real slow to slide today. Was that the goal to try and take over the ball movement and just force the Terps to beat you guys one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, you know, I do think so. I think we tried to be multiple in our defensive packages. We did start a little slow. Um, it is an outstanding ball movement team. Um, I don't know if they're the number one assist team in the country, but if not, they're up there. So um, Definitely one of their strengths, uh, trying to limit their strengths all day. Um, so yeah, you're spot on. We were a little slow to slide early, a um, little sloppy in some more defensive decisions early on. They really make you pay for your mistakes. Here in the front row. 
Matt, coming off the, the pandemic year and then really not having a season, you know, like that, did you feel like you were almost starting over in a way? Yeah, we kind of thought we had it all figured out. We sat there as fans for a year, and I don't know if it's challenge. I mean, it's it's always challenging when you're watching lacrosse to just be a fan in my seat. I think we're always trying to study the game. So I think as coaches, we took an opportunity to to figure it all out. We thought we had it all figured out. Kind of rolled into the fall, um, played some ball scrimmages, realized we did not have it figured out. We were still kind of moving our moving our pieces around, um, even early in the spring, moving pieces around. I don't think we had a consistent lineup defensively all year. I think we really did move guys in and out. We had injuries here and there. So um, credit to our guys, you know, our coaches, preparing our depth guys. Uh, they did a really nice job. Front row, Rick Scher. Uh Coach, obviously, you know, this one stinks, but, you know, you have a ton to be proud of uh, this season. And, uh, you know, just building off of this, uh, how hopeful are you for the future of Princeton lacrosse? And, you know, just getting back to championship weekend, uh, you know, what did this whole experience mean to your team? Very hopeful. I mean, you know, I, I was fortunate enough, again, and, I, and this is, has nothing to do with me. I don't want to make it about me, but I'm fortunate enough to, to have this experience as a player, and I saw just how it impacted when that next team returned, the expectations, the standards, um, the ability to, to understand how to truly practice and really not, you know, you can't really have, you can't really waste days, can't really make those mistakes. So hopefully it does. Hopefully, you know, the toughness and, and the, the leadership of the senior class um, that carried us for this opportunity to this weekend um, will really have a lasting impact on the program. And I think it will. I think it does burn for those young guys, all those young guys walking off the field, you know, throwing the coach's pal and saying, hey, coach, like, we'll get you back. We'll be back here. Um, so I think it's just that that experience um, that's got to pay dividends moving forward. Front row. What was the experience like for you as a coach? Now you talked about the murders you had as a player. What was it like from this perspective? It was wonderful. I mean, look, the, to the guys to the left and right of me, you know, Coach Jim Mitchell, Coach Jeremy Hirsch, um, our volunteer coach, Chris Aslanian, our director of operations, Drew Cottrell, our strength coach, Mark Ellis, and our strength the equipment guy, you know, Derek, our trainer, George O'Neill. I mean, it's, it's an incredible crew. So for everyone to have this experience, um, I think it will continue to drive us forward just trying to earn this opportunity for our guys again. We have any other questions for Coach? Okay. Thank you. Appreciate the coverage all year.